Arizona State football player. I want to know what position you played, um, how long you were playing. Was that like your goal? What shifted you to the MMA? And then what in God's name shifted you to what you're doing today? <laughs> I can I I can I can I can sum up this pretty quick. I started playing football when I was 10 and uh wanted to play pro. That was always my goal. And uh really just learned as much as I could about strength and conditioning um wasn't a super talented athlete but loved the sport and i ended up walking on at arizona state i finished my last two years there after playing junior college football and then hit rock bottom depression like i'd never had before uh, a lot of childhood stuff and uh in addition to that just seeing you know kind of a grim outlook on not wanting to follow my parents footsteps both being in sales and living on commissions and and just the swing of we've got money we have nothing um, and didn't want to have a desk job, you know, so I wanted to continue to train in anything. I missed the camaraderie and the aspect of being on a team. So I started training in mixed martial arts. And, uh, after about six months, one of the guys, uh, at the gym that I was training at, he owned his own small promotion out in Arizona called rage in the cage. And he's like, dude, just fight. You're, you're handsome. You're big and you're athletic. Uh, you can always say you had one pro fight to get your ass kicked. You don't have to ever do it again, but if you, if you do well, you can keep going and see where it takes you and I, I knocked the first guy out in under 30 seconds i knocked the second guy out in under 30 seconds and from that point on i was hooked and so i started training really hard i took my first loss out in arizona and being originally from the silicon valley you know uh near san jose my strength coach reached out reached out to me from arizona state and he's like king's barry what are you doing go go home you got to go home and train at aka the best in the world train there king velasquez is there and Kane was uh, wrestling when I was playing football at Arizona State. We actually had a lot, a lot of guys in those classes, uh, 04, 05, 06, become professional fighters that did really well in the UFC. And so I moved home, started training at NAK with Kane. Uh, Daniel Cormier came on board. Like we had the best of the best all in one house. I didn't become the best, but I always got to train with the best. And that was my first deep dive into. I mean, fighting lit my ass, a fire under my ass to want to learn more. And it started with optimization. You know, uh, I started learning about Wim Hof and breath work and different things like that, strictly for fighting and calming my mind, peace, meditation for fighting. Um, but I had a boxing coach who was uh, Mayan and, uh, you know, a mestizo mixed with uh, Mexican. And um, he he started working with us on the other side of things you know he'd bring me and kane out for traditional sweat lodges we do the Temes call on a native american reservation up in northern california and eventually i was like hey coach when are we gonna uh use la medicina and he just burst out laughing and he said oh i've just been waiting for you to ask me you know and that, and that was it dude i started working with psilocybin and i was and it was like a whole fucking as you know a whole door opened up um and uh you know since then i've, I've really let spirit guide me over the years. And it's, you know, every time I say yes, it pans out, you know, I mean, ayahuasca brought me here to Austin, Texas and told me I'd meet people. I met Aubrey Marcus when I was speaking at paleo effects on health and wellness. And of course he's the CEO and owner of on it at the time. And we shared the same flight back to Vegas where I was living at that time and just traded war stories from plant medicines to fasting to all things, health and wellness. And he's like, brother, I got to bring you on it, on it. And, um, it took some nudging, but he brought me and Tosh, my wife, to uh, Burning Man, and that was it. <laughs> Checkmate. So, <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> so here we are, you know, and, and I've been podcasting for a while. After going on Rogan's a couple times in 2015, he nudged me, as he does many people. And yeah. that's just continued my ability to learn from some of the best folks in the world, medical doctors to, um, you know, the best in sports and, and meditation experts and everything in between. So it's been uh, just an amazing experience that I feel very fortunate to have really just been floating along the ride for. I love it, bro. I love it. You know what I love the most about it is it, um, I recognize an element of your journey. You So you pushed yourself. Um, you were in these competitive sports where you really, really had to push yourself. Like if you're not in the top, what, 97 you know, percentile, like you're pretty, or, or I guess the top 3%, you're pretty much not going to be, and I could be overstating it by that, maybe top 1% of the people trying to get into the UFC or trying to get into Arizona State. Um, 
you really had to push yourself. But what I see in that is the same thing that kind of like I was in a band pushing for that. And then the film thing came up and that's what kind of swept me away. And even though it was a little chaotic because I felt like I was, you know, wish washy jumping from this profession to that profession, I noticed the through line in all of that was I wouldn't call it human optimization unless you understand that that's actually a spiritual path, human optimization. And I kind of feel like that's where you were pushing as well as like the, the competitive nature also had within it this thing that was calling you to keep transcending yourself, transcending your old limits. And um, it naturally brought you to plant medicines, which it, it naturally brought me to plant medicines. So I guess I want to ask other people who are in that you were training with, I think you said Cormier was in the same group. How many of them were hip to, maybe not doing, but hip to the plant medicine world, what it meant to the to the spirit, you know, and also how many people were trying it when you were training back then? How many other people did you feel had some kind of interest in it? Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting question. You know, the, the first, how do I put this? I'll put it this way. I had, I had some injuries in 2012 when I really started working with ayahuasca. And injuries kept me from fighting until 2014. So I had a two-year layoff. And in that time, really had moved past fighting in a way. The reason why I had that final fight is because I wanted to see, like, can I bring my quiet mind into the fight? How does that change things? Mm. And I did bring my quiet mind. I got my ass kicked in my final fight. <laughs> so I was like, All right, I guess it didn't, it didn't change the outcome per se. I just didn't care, you know? Mm. And... Mm. Um, Ayahuasca, of course, allowed me to transition gracefully without being attached to that. And um, how I viewed it at that point was, you know, this is an amazing tool. I mean, I wanted to shout from the mountaintops like this exists. Like I, people don't know this exists. This experience exists in the human body. This is insane. And, um, you know, like most people uh, really wanted the world to try it. And but I was very clear. I understood that it wasn't something for fighters if they really gave a shit about their career don't do it while you're fighting that has that opinion has not changed if you were when you're retired for sure have at it but while you're fighting if that's the most important thing in the world to you i don't recommend guys do that you know because it, it can shift that and maybe that's a net positive but um you know i mean we're all called to the medicine when we're called to the medicine at that time i was I think I was the only guy at American Kickboxing Academy that was you know really dabbling with that. We had a lot of guys doing the sweat lodge. A lot of guys were curious, but um, no one participated with me from the fight world. You know, since then, um, and I, I know he has no problem with me talking about it. Cain Velasquez, you know, reached out to me and said that he had his first journeys with ayahuasca and uh, the Sonoran Desert Toad. Those are pretty big boy. You know, those are those are some mm -hmm. big medicines, you know, and, and he had just nothing but gratitude. He, he said that I was with him through it the whole way and, you know, really thanked me for for being in his ear about it for so many years to no avail. You know, when he was ready, he crossed that threshold. You know, Rashad Evans and mm -hmm. um, Chuck Liddell and a lot of the guys, you know, a lot of the, you know, my heroes, the guys that I loved watching, uh, guys that I've been able to train with, you know, like Chuck over the years that they've um, – participated recently and and uh i know rashad is is definitely not a rookie when it comes to plant medicines but also you know coming in his retirement so mm -hmm. i think the word is is out and a lot of pe more people are doing it now than than when i first started back in 2009 ish um it was probably just less well known less popular make sure you all head over to benjosephstewart.com become a member you'll have access to the growing library of deeper dives where i talk about all the stuff that I really can't talk about on YouTube. Make sure you get involved in the Discord chat. That's where a lot of the conversation is happening, talking about new theories, being able to interweave into the greater conversation that is how we awaken infinity. That's our highest potential. And I just want to remind you, you are the most powerful technology ever known to creation. Wield it like an artist with a conscience.